Retrograde Amnesia is a member of the Greenlit Podcast Network, a coalition of creator-owned podcasts focused on video gaming, entertainment, and pop culture. Go to greenlitpodcast.com to find out about all the great shows on the network. Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Do you know we have a Patreon page? I set one up even before we started recording the podcast. What's the URL? It's patreon.com slash retroim. Go there. Miniseries? Min- yes. Bonus episodes? Wow. 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 You should do that. Anyway, would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Yes. Okay. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia. Confident is a podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs chapter by chapter, beat by beat. In this series, we are covering Chrono Cross. Tonight, we'll explore the outcomes of our hypothetical death. My name is Chris. I am joined tonight by Eric. Hey, Eric. I think about my hypothetical death all the time. Do you? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you want to do it some more about somebody else's hypothetical death tonight? Sure, yeah. It sounds super healthy. Yes. Let's do it with our friends, The Real Net. We are also joined tonight by The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. Join the chat. Patreon.com slash RetroIM. We are also joined by The Fake Net, our post-production AI companion with advanced voice synthesis. Initializing Fake Net. I'm on my best behavior today, boys. Thank you, FakeNet. Good to see you again. Actually, you can't see me. And the one time you paid an artist to draw me, he plagiarized my image. So, Eric, we're ready to move on to another chapter. We have just left Arnie, but it is not the same Arnie that we know. Every- you know what they say? Everything is the same but nothing or something like that. Was that what it was? This game is chapter dense. Uh, it is. I think there's only like 28 total, though, so... Oh, so we're just blazing through. Yeah, cool. we're, we're, well, I, I think there's a lot early on. 420 blazing. Yes, indeed. Uh, this chapter is called Cape Howl. Because that's where we're heading. The From subti- Gilligan's Island? Probably. Nick at Night. The chapter subtitle is one of the following three, Eric. Is it a reminder of one's former self, presentiment of past lives? No. Or becoming whole with a drowned soul? There's no way it rhymes. It's the first one, <laughs> remembrance of oneself. Yeah, that was an alley-oop. Yeah, a reminder, <laughs> a, a reminder of one's former self. I wanted to use the word presentiment as soon as possible. Is that a word? Did you make that up? Can you do that? That, that was a word that we learned during the course of Xenogears because Saiten said it, and we had to look it up. To make sure Saiten was speaking English? And it was. It was a word that had to do with a premonition, a dark premonition mm. of some sort. In fact, please see episode 47 of our Xenogears podcast called Hitherto Presentiment, mm. releasing... At theaters near you. Or not. On to Cape Howl, Eric. Cape Howl. Let's go. This place is quiet. It's rocky, it's sandy, and there are several blowholes. Eric, have you ever seen a live blowhole? No, I haven't. Blowholes are cool. They blow? Because you can absolutely understand the forces of nature that cause them to occur. By throwing a Pepsi in one? But it's still awesome. Oh. So... This place didn't look like this last time. Did you go to Cape Howl in the previous world? I don't think I did. It was... Now it is very orange and dead, and it didn't used to be that way, but there are still beach bums hopping around. Indeed. Uh, This, again, I noticed the sick lens flares occurring as the sun sets across the ocean when the battles... Yeah, during battles. Yeah, Yeah. they always sneak in. It's like a tenth of a second of lens flare. Like, the the PS1's going to overload if it does too much of that shit. Yeah, absolutely. Then we just kind of uh, traverse upwards a little bit. It's a single screen. Yeah, one, one screen up until we get to the top part. Once we get there, all we hear is the sound of ocean winds and seagulls. Birds chirping. Yes, the gulls are flying across the ocean as the sun sets. It's a really cool silhouette, and it kind of repeats like it's on a circular track. Yeah, those birds loop over and over again. Yeah. I was trying to get the perfect screenshot, and uh, I noticed that as well. The water is a dull shade of brown, and it has a single path glistening in the sunlight. I have no idea how they did this, and it's here where I really appreciate how naturally the non-static elements of static backgrounds has advanced in the last few years. Yeah, and the seagulls really tie everything together. By the way, uh, go to patreon.com slash retroim and listen to our Teradigma miniseries to find out the maximum height a seagull can fly. This is true. We determined that. So then It'll we... shock you. <laughs> it will. Then, 
Uh, go check out our grave. No, not our grave. Well, it is our grave, right? It's Serge's grave. Yeah, as they approach the grave, so- Serge nods to Pashul, who seems to understand what that means, and trots away. Yes, Serge said something. We are the proxy. What did you say to Pashul? Did you say, fuck off, or I need a moment? You can actually say something? No. Oh, I was gonna, Oh, I, I would have said I need a moment. I respect Pashul. Okay, me I don't, too. I don't swear at Pashul. I, I swear at my own pets all the time, but that's because they misbehave. Yes, and they don't talk back and write notes. Pashul's a sweet girl. Yes, when Pashul walks away... Uh, she's got the the bouncy like big dumb St. Bernard energy yeah but also it makes the same little sound that little boink 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 oh. uh, the, the, that's a little sound effect of, of her feet hitting the ground like uh, when the hap- Rugrats walk yeah it happens a lot in the Pokemon anime as well so mm. I, I can imagine I think it actually happens with Choo Choo in the Xenogears ending as well so uh, take it for what it's worth so it then cuts to a close-up of the cliff with the grave. It's like a secret, another pre-rendered cutscene. Yes. Serge approaches it he kneels down and notes something written on the tombstone. Yes. R.I.P., our beloved Serge, died age seven. Nobody can take anything away from him, nor can anyone give anything to him. What came from the sea has returned to the sea. Serge then rises and seems to shake his head no. That that line, nor can anyone give anything to him, is depressing. dark. Yeah. That is dark. Like, usually an epitaph is... It's hopeful. It's solemn, but it's also, it's always hopeful or in remembrance of some sort of some positive trait of that person but in this case it's like no he's gone i aspire to have a jack lemon epitaph a jack lemon yeah are you familiar with this no it just says jack lemon in that's it yeah because in dead grave he's dead he's in here okay gotcha I just want this epitaph, actually. Yeah. Rest in peace, Surge died at seven. Well, if you die in like a truck accident, oh, if you rest in peace, Surge died at seven, like the whole. <laughs> yes. That's what I want. So uh, I need to call the person who wrote my will. So a voice calls then from off screen. Yes. It says, you, so you must be Surge, the ghost of the boy who died 10 years ago, as if we haven't already figured that out. Yes. 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 Then a purple haired man approaches. We later learn his name to be Karsh, and he has two soldiers with him. He refers to Serge as the ghost of the boy who died 10 years ago. That's, again, a more confirmation that not only Serge died, but Carr seems to know the rules of the universe. Yeah. He knows what's up. He knew he were, we were going to be here, and he wants Serge to, quote, be a good boy and come with him. The subordinates have something to say as well. He's got a, a tall, thin man in plate armor and a short, stout man in plate armor flanking him and as they as they advance they kick Poshul off the fucking cliff yes I'd like to know how they planned that one out again I think maybe this is a, a representation of them adding Poshul to the game later well no but they already like Serge already told Poshul to fuck off yeah that's like, true Poshul didn't this didn't have to happen someone thought it'd be funny to kick Poshul <laughs> off a cliff Serge only needed Poshul to be out of the frame <laughs> yeah not too far he just needed some mild like, social distancing stay here. back yes Karsh notes that they have no business with Serge's friend, who they just tried to kill. Yep. They're here for him. Do we want to talk about Karsh's subordinates' names? If you want to go ahead and talk about them now, let's do it. Salt and Pepor. Yes, Salt spelled with S-O-L-T. And S-O-L-T. Pepor, yeah. Pepor, P-E-P-P-O-R. Yeah, they're full of good salt. Oh, a good is a relative term, but they're full of good salt and pepper puns. Yeah, they, have, they say the word shake in almost everything. Yeah, it's... Uh, grading. So but. Salt and Pepor argue over whether or not Serge is a ghost. Yes. Karsh responds with, it doesn't matter. We found the boy here just like he said we would. Indeed. Didn't we? So someone knows that Sir, like this isn't, Karsh is not the top dog here. Someone dispatched Karsh here. Yes, there is some sort of entity that is maybe being framed as a either mini boss or major protagonist here, right? Yes. Then we get an interruption. Yes. Hold your horses. Y-E-R. Yes. There's a CG cutscene of a girl on a cliff. It starts out with her legs, and the camera works its way up to her face, where she kind of winks. Yeah, she's got a kind of a, a smirk and a wink, a very confident We recognize look. her from the introduction of this game, the yes. prologue. Kid. It's Kid. It's Kid. Yes. Surge does not know her name at this point in time, but it is her. And this is the first time that you can really notice that she's got some small streaks of face paint mm-hmm. on both her face and her arms. She leaps over to Surge's side and appears to want to challenge the aggressor's with Surge. Yeah, she tells Karsh and his friends to shut your trap. You're the ones who better get out of the way. Like, they both told each other to get out of the way. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Karsh demands that, quote, Junior 
comes with them, which is how he's referring to Surge at this point in time, or his axe will have to do the talking. Before that, Pepor has the best line in the game. Oh? Do you have a shaken idea of who you're messing with, Missy? <laughs> you have a fucking idea who you're messing with? Yeah, then the music changes. Edge of death. Brink of death. One or the other. Kid says, I'm going to kick your sorry asses so hard you'll kiss the moons. Yes, Plural. indeed. Plural moons. I guess yes. this planet has two moons. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Kid's ultimate signature line here. I think she says this multiple times throughout the game from my kiss remembrance. Kiss the moons? Yes. Cool. So then we get a double lens flare as the battle screen reveals the sunset and those geysers. Everyone slowly fades in. Yes. The soldiers sense our element. Karsh demands to use the opposite, but Salt says he forgot to bring it. Yes. Karsh calls him a nincompoop and says you should always carry an element of every color. It turns out Karsh doesn't have any elements either and notes that a real man doesn't need magic when they can fight with their might. He lays on the machismo early on in this video game. Yeah, like rather than admit a weakness, he's like, I don't even fucking need it. Yeah, and this is kind of our mini tutorial on the idea of every character having an innate ability Yes, in terms of a color element that I guess that they are either sensitive to or have the ability to get additional damage. Are you familiar with a stab bonus in Pokemon? I haven't played a Pokemon since before I played this. Same type attack bonus. So if you're a fire Pokemon and use a fire move, you get an additional multiplier on that damage. That's fire. Yes. I, I was using fire like an adjective, like good. Fuck you. So it's also kid's name here is still girl. Yes. Did you have any strategy here? How did you, how'd you fight this fight? I just uh, kind of laid it on him. Yeah, so did I. I just, uh, I just bashed him. Yeah, you just use, use my stats. I don't even, don't even think I needed to heal. I love how <laughs> I love how Salt carries his huge axe. Yeah. And then with his, I guess this is his weak attack or whatever, but what he does is he just pokes you at the end of it. So yeah. swinging the whole thing, which is uh, kind of funny. I mean, if you, you can beat somebody with the end of a stick pretty easily. It's pretty hard to lose. After the battle, Salt and Pepper scamper away. Karsh calls them damn cowards. Yes, and when we win the battle, we gain a star level. What is a star level? It appears that that is our, the leveling up system in this video game. We received one after beating the Komodo Dragon Mother, and we are receiving one now. So who is the we here? Since Pashul was in that battle, does Pashul not get that level, or does everyone have a star level that adheres to whatever it is you've got? The star level is applicable to anybody in your party. Okay. It essentially puts a cap on their growth. So after every battle from here on out, now that we are star level three, mm -hmm. we will gain stats. You'll see that in the victory screen. Yeah, when you win, it says you've gained eight HP or something like that. Yes. Like it adds to your base stats. Yes, eventually that will plateau and stop until you get another star level. And you just get money instead of stats. Yes, it just prevents you from over leveling and it also prevents you from having to level up all your characters. It just gives you a uniform level for everyone and kind of get rid of the the grinding that JRPGs were yeah. somewhat infamous for at this point in, in history. I predict that as a response to the director, maybe Kado, not liking games that force grinding. It reminded me of when Miyazaki from Dark Souls, yeah. when he made Bloodborne, I imagined him seeing people playing with shields and being like, I fucking hate these people. Mm -hmm. Turtling through every match and then just, what if they just didn't have a shield? I don't think that anyone really took this from Chrono Cross and implemented it anywhere else. I haven't seen it line. anywhere else, yeah. I mean, th the most interesting kind of version of this is in the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition where you can turn off certain buckets of experience from applying to your characters mm. to prevent over leveling and then and then reapply them later if you're under leveled and it gives you some flexibility but in terms of just having a blanket ceiling on your ability to level I've not really seen that I'm gonna go ahead and say that's probably in Resonance of Fate because that game has so many mechanics I have no idea what's happening according to Carfo on the real net the stats that you get to are random so Pray for strength on Surge. <laughs> so. Yes, after the battle, Pepper says they have to shake it out of here. Yes, Kid asks if we're all right and seems to know our name is Surge. Mm -hmm. Her name is Kid. Yes. She couldn't stand by and watch them beat Surge. Quote, they just pissed the bloody hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> she... I wish I could have beat them up more. Yeah. She asks why they're after Surge and seems taken aback that he had never met them before. And during this conversation too the the, the camera ch the camera angle changes we're looking at a side view of the cliff instead oh, it of does? from behind yeah cool pretty cool kid wants then to team up with surge for a while she says that karsh ain't gonna leave surge alone kid said she is new to these islands as well and she's lonely traveling so how how misguided would you be to have the presumed second main character of this game try to team up and say hey this is good how dumb would you have to be to refuse Pretty dumb. You'd have to have a strategy guide. <laughs> yeah. You know? 
I refused. Yes, indeed. Chris and I are going to try to go opposite paths as often as we can in this game. Yes. She says, perhaps it was a fate that we would meet like this, and mm-hmm. then you have the option to refuse or travel together. When I chose travel together, she says, beauty mate. That decides it then. We're going to be real good mates now. And then she says, time to head back to Arnie and shack up for now. Don't go trying any funny stuff, just cause I'm cute and all. How are they going to shack up? They don't, neither one of them, there's not even an inn. They're going to go sleep in Sarge's room together. With the, the Komodo dragon? The Komodo dragon's room, excuse me. All right, man, I'm going to watch you all sleep, man. Yes. Uh, so what happened with you? I refused. And this made me, as a human, feel bad. Yeah. Kid says, hang on, are you telling me you're going to refuse the company of a lonely, vulnerable, sweet little girl? And you can reply with, fine, let's go. Or three dots. <laughs> wow. I give kid the three dots. Yeah. And she says, I might live to regret it. Hmm. You can reply with, sure, let's go. Or no thanks. Wow. I chose no thanks. The game really wants me to do this. And I am now paranoid I may be doing something very wrong. Yes. Don't worry, Eric. You're doing something actually correct. She then says, she's, well, have it your way, mate. And as she walks off, my only thought is, what the fuck did I do, Chris? <laughs> yes. As for content, Eric, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think you'll, you'll get a payoff here a little bit later. So as she's fucking off, Kid turns around and says she'll be heading north to a town called Termina. Mm -hmm. She tells Serge it's getting dark soon and he should go find a place to shack up for the night. Yep. She doesn't want Serge to become Hecron bait. Yes. Pashul emerges and says, That was terrible. They should be kind to animals. (laughs) Yes. Thank you, Pashul. Is that what Pashul said in yours as well? Did she never come back? (laughs) No, Pashul came back, but... If you were an Arnie and you went to the pier and Pashul just washed up. <laughs> no, I think, I think Pashul just kind of rejoined during this conversation, but I, I could be wrong. Video Death Loop is a podcast where we watch a short video clip on loop until we just can't take it anymore. Along the way, we'll try our best to make each other laugh and to hold out longer than the other guy. You can jump in on any episode. No need to worry about continuity. Check out Video Death Loop on the Greenlit Podcast Network with new episodes every Friday. This is Super Nintendo's. You know I don't like Dr. Mario. I think he's a fraud back alley doctor. Come on, am I very happy to be here? With the help of a doula, you can do anything in the tub. You're looking at the Nintendo knitting machine! Do you feel that I abused you by making you play Night Trap? <laughs> I challenge you guys to a dance off at McDonald's tomorrow's. What have I done, Sweet Jesus? What have I done? Because <laughs> Super Nintendo's entertainment podcast. Every week right here on Greenland. So did you do anything else before you went back to Arnie? No, we're, we're now into a new chapter, Eric. Oh, gosh. Yes. You ready for this one? Let's do it. Okay. This next chapter is called Heading North, because guess what? We're going north. The subtitle is... No, we're not. We're going south. We're going south to Arnie. Well, our ultimate mission is to go north to Termina, okay. so uh, that, that's what we're going to go with here. The subtitle is... I, I think this is actually one of the ones that's not in the game. Eric, is the subtitle Empty Road, Missing Souls, In Search of Some Answers, or searching for the reason to be. Searching for the reason to be. That is incorrect. Fuck. The answer is in search of some answers. That's too plain. Yeah, it is. I don't accept that. Yeah, well, some are plain, some are kind of wistful. We'll see. Makes it a hard game. Mm-hmm. So we go back to Arnie? Yeah. Or actually, no, we don't go back. Serge just wakes up. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. It's... In the old room with the Komodo dragon. Another Arnie plays. When we wake up, in, in my situation, Kid says it's time to get our arses to Termina. Then she gives me the teleporter. Mm. which will allow us to switch party members from afar. It's a very hand-wavy device. PHS. Yes. She says that it's a pain in the arse to explain, so just look in the fucking menu. When I was there, Lena pulled the shades open and oh. said, Rise and shine, everyone. A new day awaits. And didn't Rex say this verbatim in Xenoblade 2? Uh, he says a new day. It's a new day, everyone, all the time. Okay. So Lena knew she would find Surge here, mm-hmm. but... Isn't as weirded out as one would think to find Serge sleeping in the same room of the stranger's house next door that the boy used to live in. Yes, absolutely. So before I talk about what else Lena says, did you talk to Lena in your game with Kid? Uh, yes, but she didn't really have much else to say. All right. My Lena then concluded Serge had an accident and hit his head. That's why his memory is all messed up. He's really someone else. He only thinks he is the Serge that died 10 years ago. She wants to help and she can't leave Serge alone like this. Lena wants to join Serge on his way to Termina. She later confesses that it feels like she's always known Serge. Lena joins your party, Victory Fanfare. Oh, congratulations, Eric. You got a new character. I did. Do you know that if you missed Pashul originally and you take, if you take the route that you took, mm-hmm. 
Lena will also bring Pashul along. Oh, the vacationing Pashul? Yes. Yeah, so it's the, the game doesn't determine as a determine it as a different Pashul, but mm-hmm. in reality, it is the yeah. other world Pashul that joins you at this point in time. If you didn't get her originally, this Pashul has uh, listens to new metal and is colored black for some. No, it's <laughs> that, man, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? So, did anything happen when you tried to leave this ha- the house? Uh, no. When I did, the guy who owns the house came out and said, what? You again? Give me a break. What do you want from me? Oh, yeah. He, I think he said that to me, but I had to initiate the conversation. Okay. Yeah. So that's all I did there. I next went to the Northeast house basement. Yes. Back to Kiki's house, right? Yes. This is the only other thing that you can really do, th- do here at this point in time. So you go down there and I think he gives his whole spiel again. Yeah. This is the guy who's worshiping the idol down there. Yes, and this the music that is still playing here, The Isle of the Damned. Yes. Or something of that ilk. Whatever it was that I said. Yes. And at this point in time, you can give him the shark tooth that we received from his other self. He says it's the tooth of a ferocious lion shark, which he thinks must have been 15 feet long. Absolute unit. It's then implied, after he asked if Serge caught it, that the other him in the world gave it to Serge. He denies all of this, telling Serge that there is only one me, and there couldn't be another me out there. Yes, he gets very sad and tells us to leave. He, he doesn't believe Serge, even though Serge appears to be coming clean here about where he got the shark tooth at. He concludes there's no changing the path that he's on. He gives the lion tooth back to Serge and, and asks him to put, quote, that thing away and move on. Yeah, fuck off, Serge. So then you try to leave. Yes, but Bogum. 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 Hold, Hold on, on a second there. What's speaking? Love is always in the air. <laughs> It's just that no one notices. It's the doll that he was worshipping, yes, the, the effigy, the, the, the straw man. The straw man effigy. Pull out your straw man and make an argument. The victory noise plays and this thing comes to life. Yes. What's its name? I am Mojo and I am Bring Om Good Fortune. Boogum. So Mojo adds an extra O-M or O to most words. That's his thing? That's, That's his their th- thing? Are we going to gender Mojo? I gendered him as a he. Okay. Just because I don't think that I mean, I think... If it's a Japanese game, it would have breasts. Well, I was going to say, like, one thing important to note about Mojo is that it has a giant nail through its chest. Yep. And I feel, oh, like, a, I feel like a woman would clean that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need this. And uh, this is 2000, so we're, you know... So Mojo senses some sort of purpose. Yes, that's why he wants to come along. So before when we did this, he he didn't join us because... I guess we had no purpose. We were mm-hmm. just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Now we have a purpose. We're going north. Now that I'm a dead boy, confirmed we're, dead boy. We're heading north, searching for some answers. But before Mojo comes with this, he tells this guy off. Yeah, the guy protests, and Mojo stands on one leg <laughs> and says, There's um nothing drool about me. Just a word of advice. Droll. Drool. He has another, it's supposed to be droll, but he adds an O to words with two O's. Kind of like how the fake net repeats us after we repeat the same thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just a word of advice. Stop them running and come face to face with your life. A messenger of courage and love I am. Then it starts dancing and it says, I'm lucky, I'm lucky, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Imagine all if all of your be- religious beliefs are true and then it's confirmed and then the God you're worshiping says, fuck off <laughs> yes. and then leaves. It's a terrific moment from a, a standpoint of, of this man's story being a parable of sorts. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure that Mojo has no other role in this game. No. Nope. <laughs> other than being a party member for us. Uh, and uh, maybe back in the day, I didn't appreciate that as much because I wanted to have, you know, six to seven well-developed characters. Mm-hmm. But now I-, I love this moment. So what struck me as odd is Arnie has, let's say, what, 20 people in it, small village. Mm-hmm. Lena has known this guy her whole life. Yeah. She doesn't say anything. <laughs> Got nothing to say. She either accepts all this as like, oh no, yeah, that makes sense, or it just reality is crumbling so fast she can't process it. Th- this is reality, Lena. Let's go. So yeah, Mojo will be ready anytime. Needs anyone needs love or courage, and then uh, I'll never see Mojo again. I'm not using Mojo. Well, once I got back onto the world map, I accessed my teleporter and put Mojo in my party because I've got to try this guy out. I didn't have a teleporter. Yeah. Well, when I got Mojo, it gave me the option to select my party, and I. Pashul had like I didn't know it was a shared experience pool at yeah. this point and I was like well I've already used Pashul she's doing damage well important point to note here is that uh, Mojo sucks uh, so 
His his physical damage is very very weak and very it, very low. I mean, you can't grind people up, right? Exactly. And you can't up until they plateau. But mm -hmm. even after I did that, he still sucks. Uh, I'm sure that maybe he has high magic or something of that nature. But at this point in time, I don't have enough magic to be able to really leverage that. So, and when uh, someone sucks, you don't know if they're going to be the magic carp situation, where they'll eventually like once they hit a certain level get better. Yeah, absolutely. Did you go right to, did you do anything else in Arnie or did you leave? I headed straight to Fossil Valley. That's where I went. We get new music. Yes. What's the music called in your brain, Chris? The music of Fossil Valley is called Fossil Valley. Mine's called Drowning Valley. Oh, well, <laughs> I think Fossil Valley is probably the right one here. <laughs> yeah. The guards at the entrance state their excavation is nearly complete. And to stick to the high path. Um, next. I thought I've, they said this. Mm -hmm. Stick to the low path. Yes, stick to the low Avoid path. Avoid the high path. Yes, I have the high ground. Don't try it. This is an area with a lot of vegetation and bone skulls and everything around. Yeah. And when you go into a battle, it does that thing where the drone camera yeah, swirls, drone shot. Yeah, swirls around the battlefield and you see a giant dinosaur skeleton. Yes. It's amazing. Well, the, the ground is stone with green patches of grass. They're surrounded by mountains. And then there's a huge valley with the wind visibly blowing through it and the dinosaur skeleton. It, it's more of a dragon, I think, given the themes of this game. So immediately I fought some, some of those chihuahua rat things. Yes, the enemies. Bubba Dingo. Is that what the Chihuahua thing's name? Yes. I have it down as a trash can mouth Chihuahua <laughs> with an oversized head. Uh, also, occasionally uh, during these battles, a Mama Dingo will also be present here, which yes. is, is a more appropriately sized one that gets mad when you kill the babies. Yeah. And as far as I know, we don't have group attacks yet, right? You have to individually fight all these things? Yes. Yes. I, I think this game has a decent amount of double techs and stuff of that nature, but it's not as elaborate as, as its predecessor. Not yet. Nope. So did you stick to the low path or did you go up the high path? I went up the ladder because, of course, up the I ladder. wanted to go up the ladder. When I first got there, I was like, well, this must be something I have to go do later because the guard is like, we, you can't come up here. You, we're investigating a supernatural phenomenon. It's off limits. Can't go up there. And then he says, oh, wait, are you the exorcist? <laughs> yes. Are you, you're the exorcist we sent for, right? And you're like, of, of course. This is something that I want to happen once in my life where I go somewhere where I'm not supposed to be. And someone says, hey, wait, are you the exorcist we called for? And I'm going to say... Yes. Actually, no. If someone says that, I'm leaving. <laughs> Actually, yeah. You know I don't what? want to deal with that. that. That's probably a smarter decision. I'm glad you would assume that about me due to the lab coat I wear everywhere, but <laughs> actually, no. Yes. So, yeah, you tell them that, and then both soldiers, as we get up the ladder, say that we're a bit younger than they expected. Indeed. It's very windy up here, too. There's It's windy, and then there's like a screaming noise from, quote, down yonder. <laughs> yeah. And all we have to do is stop it. They don't think it's ghosts. Yeah, it's definitely not ghosts. Uh, even though... The it, other soldier notes that there is talk of a ghost from Arnie Village. Yes, th that indicates that the rumor of Surge's appearance down there is something that is spreading throughout the, uh, you know, the file and rank officers here at this point in time. So did you go investigate the noise or did you go around to the left or did you go down the ladder? I went north to investigate the noise and this is where we can see the dragon skeleton that we saw in the... In the battle, the battle screen, yeah, yes, it's here in the pre-render. It winds all around the thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. You get up there, and um, you approach the source of the noise. Yes, this, there's a skull clown portrait. It's a skull in a party hat. Yeah, skullomanium, and it's it's upsetting. It pops out and it says "nyak nyak." It has some Three Stooges verb verbiage. Yes, it says, "Looks like I'm causing quite a stir." And it goes on to tell us that it's been waiting forever for someone like us. I've been waiting forever for someone like you. Yes. Yeah, I know. You and I are both dead. Eh? Yes. I don't know how I ended up like this. I don't have a body, and I don't remember a thing. Yes. You understand what I'm going through, don't you? Yeah, he, he's the only... Maybe this is the only person that can commiserate with Sir at this point in time. For being like, dead? Yeah. You're dead, I'm dead. Hey, let's hang out. But it's a pogo stick skull. Yeah. Later it says it, it will remember more if you help it find all of its body parts. So this is where we learn that we can get people on our team, but we, we may have to assemble these people. Yes, of course. So it's not all cut and dry. You're going to have to do some weird stuff. Yes. Surge received heavy skull. Yes, that is the <laughs> the item we have in our uh, in our knapsack now is a giant talking skull, which I, I assume will rear its head once we find additional parts. Did you speak to the guard after you collected the skull? I don't think so. The guard who let me up says skulls are not supposed to jump around. Oh. And that Surge must have done some kind of supernatural trick. Yeah, of course. The other one told me to invoice Viper Manor. Oh. And then he's, the other one wonders how Sir Karsh is doing after the incident at the Isle of the Damned and all. Oh. Hmm, interesting. So next, did you go to the North Point or down the ladder? I fought some stuff here. Yep. There's a 
There's, I think there's one enemy on this screen, and it's called a Drongo. It looks like a hot dog hanging out of a dead cactus or something. And it reaches its arms out of some of the cactus's orifices and throws rocks at you. Mm-hmm. It's fucking weird, man. This is a good enemy. Yeah, it's great. This is great. I don't, you don't see a lot of these things. <laughs> also, there was a dodo in that thing's party. It's just a big bird. And if you use an element on that, the dodo gets very mad and starts charging up squawks. Yes, it has very dinosaur-like features. This yeah. is definitely the... Uh, the version of Jurassic Park that they wanted to make where everything looked kind of like a bird, but then yes. they never did it. Right. And this this thing almost killed this thing almost killed me. I had to run away, which really? is a good time to point out that you can run away from any battle in this game. At any point, is there isn't a percent thing? Yeah, I think even bosses you can do that with and just reset the reset your situation. See, a mature piece of software, it understands what players want and doesn't gate stuff that's bullshit. Yes, exactly. Thank you for inspiring all the other games that did this, guys. Nope, it didn't do that. Then you go down the ladder on the opposite side, right? And there's a giant egg you can get. Yes. It is called a big egg, there's right? A, there's like a bunch of cracked eggs, but there is one whole egg. Yes, indeed. And you have to go fight and kill another dodo. Ah, yes. It's, it's kind of presumably it, the nest, I guess. It starts jumping around like a like a like a madman. It's very upset. A mad bird. And uh you have to fight this thing and then move on from Surge there. Surge received big egg. Thank you, big egg. Did you go in the north area? All you do up there, I mean, it's where I fought the first Dongo and with the Dodos. And then at the end of it, you pick a bell flower on a cliff, which Surge picks gently. Again, Fossil Valley, total of what, two and a half screens? I figured this was going to be our first introduction to a longer type dungeon area. But yeah. no, it's a couple and screens. What I like about this game is you end up, if you play smart, you can heal yourself after every battle. So you're not obligated to go leave town and go save and come back. And that anxiety of what if I die after accomplishing yeah. all this shit doesn't happen. At some point in time, I went back to town to make sure that I had Mojo properly equipped. Mm-hmm. But it turns out that Mojo just sucks ass. <laughs> so like, why is this guy doing so bad? Yeah, he, he, he does very little physical damage. So did you do anything else before you try to leave? No. What happens when you try to leave? Well, it's our friend's salt. And Pepor, once again. They have a theme now. Yes. One is ordering the other to shake it. Uh, wh- what do you have for the theme name here? Optimism. <laughs> I have Paradise. Cool. Same thing. It's kind of a, a goofy tune that sounds a lot like the Solaris song. It's silly. From Xenogears. Yeah. Uh, have, have you ever done that thing where you uh, hold your phone up to a song and ask uh, Google to identify it? Never once in my life. Okay. Well, uh, you are a weird iPhone user, but I did that with Google and it actually pulled up Solaris Eden of Heaven. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, Maybe because... I'll overlay them both right here. Yeah. podcast yeah i mean there's uh, chris and i have a soft spot for you go to a place that's supposed to be deeply serious like esther and final fantasy 8 or solaris and it's just the wackadoodle music instead yeah yeah it's great so salt and pepper can't shake it back to the manor like this right they can't remember what kind of outfit he was shaken <laughs> yeah i wrote down they make a bunch of puns that i'm not writing down for fear of corruption yes <laughs> These Rosencrantz and Guildenstern motherfuckers have a whole thing about it being the guy they're looking for. Ah, that's a great analogy there, Rod- Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Thank mm-hmm. you. We get into a fight, and Optimism, or Paradise, continues to play. Mm-hmm. Chris, what's different about this fight? This time they say they brought a black element. Yes, this is also a tutorial of sorts. Yes, but it, instead of it being an attack element, it was an element called Turn Black. Yes. Which defeats the purpose of their strategy here because salt accidentally turns searches element black yes so then they do not have any items that they can or excuse me they don't have any elements that they can use to defeat surge and exploit his weaknesses when i win they shake it out of here 
And that's about it. Do we get a star level for this? I mean, it opens the next part of the game. That would make sense. Yeah, I, I think at this point in time, and we'll confirm this later, but I, I think at this point in time is when you get Surge's first tech. But I don't know what it's called. Initializing real net. Carfo posts a screenshot. Mojo's character screen. It's called Profile Cursed Voodoo Doll. <laughs> Age unknown. Origin Far East. Height 6'3", weight 20 pounds? Or is that yeah. 201? Uh, it's got to be, it's gotta be 20, 20, it's gotta 20 pounds. He just made a straw. Build waist list, dominant arm unknown. We should do these for everybody. Yeah, we definitely have to get, get back on these. We'll catch up on that uh, as soon as we can. We only have a few characters. Initializing real net. Future past injection. Time paradox achieved. So this game has character profiles, right, Eric? Yes. Yes, let's go through them now, now that we know they exist, thanks to future Carfo. Are they accessible in the game? Yes. Like status you, on the status screen? Yes, they're in the status screen. I am using the reproduction of those on the RPG classics, uh, RPG shrines. So we are going to use these because they've got some additional facts that are not in the game. So first is Serge. Have you heard of this guy? Yeah, Sergey. Yes, <laughs> Sergey. Serge Ibaka, the basketball player. He His profile is silent protagonist, which is, you know, that's on the nose, right? Mm-hmm. That's what he is. His age is 17. He's a male. His origin is Arnie from the home world. He is 5'7". He weighs 128 pounds, which seems a little light because he's pretty muscular. Yeah. Uh, his build is ordinary, and he is right-handed. With silent protagonists, do you ever assume that perhaps they are mute, but it is being mute is a common thing, and then people in these worlds treat disabilities like normal people, and no one ever just calls attention to it? I think that could be the case in some games, but in this game in particular, there are times when it seems obvious that Surge is explaining something to somebody and it doesn't appear on the screen. Mm. It's that technique that they want to use the silent protagonist as the proxy for the the player. I'm going to go ahead and think he's a telepath. Sorry. It's debatable if it works. Well, I guess we'll discuss that along the way. Also, his innate element is white and his weapon is the swallow. Purity. Uh, there is no change from his Japanese name. His name is also Surge in Japan. Next character that we've missed is Kid. We like kids so far. Her profile is Mysterious Traveler. Her age is 16. She's a female. Pay no mind to the fact she's doing marijuana in our profile picture. Her origin... Drugs are illegal for everybody. It's fine. Yeah, of course. In the El Nino... Ar- Archipelago. Archipelago. Got it. Her height is 5'5". Five, five. She weighs 99 pounds. Also seems low. She's pretty muscular. Her build is slender and she is ambidextrous. Her Japanese name is Kid with two Ds in the, in, in the romanization. Her innate element is red and her weapon is a dagger. Do you, with her pirate nature, do you think Captain Kid is an influence on that? You know what? I'm not really sure. Maybe we'll have to check that, check into wh- where this comes from because it is kind of weird. I wish these bios have like artist uh, comment. Who inspired you for this? Yes. Also, this has the a note on her accent. The accent is Australian. Note that one of her exclamations, Struth, is more commonly spelled as Struth, S-T-R-E-W-T-H. Still, nice localization job. Also, when they wrote exclamations in this thing, they wrote ejaculations, and it really threw me off. Yikes. (laughs) So, I think they meant exclamations. Next, our girl, Pashul. The quote, (laughs) this thing's profile is, quote, in quotes, the wonder dog, question marks. Poshul the Wonder Dog, of course. Yeah. Age unknown, female. We got that right. The origin is either Arnie or home. The home or- Arnie or other Arnie, right? Yes. The origin is home Arnie or another Arnie, depending on how the story played out. I think we've already covered that. Height, three feet, eight inches. Weight, 26 pounds. Again. Is that if you like stand her up on her hind legs? Yeah. Maybe she's just really fluffy. Her build. What do you think her build is? Can you guess her build? Cupcake. Uh, close. Roly poly. <laughs> Dominant Paul is unknown. Innate element is yellow. Japanese name is also Pashul. We should go play, uh, do a stream of Wonder Dog for Sega CD and label it as the original Pashul <laughs> yes. inspiration. Yes, indeed. So the last one we have is our friend Mojo. Initializing fake tech. You boys already did this one, but you don't remember that now. I will not delete it as to make you both look foolish. Ha ha ha. Mojo's profile is the cursed voodoo doll. Age is unknown. Male. Origin far east from another world. Height 6'3". Weight 20 pounds. Build is wasteless. He has no waste, apparently. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Dominant arm unknown. Innate element is black. And Eric, what do you think his Japanese name is? Just take a stab at this. It's Lucky Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't guess that. You put a million monkeys doing typewriters and I would not pick that out. 
I guess I'll, maybe I'll have to start asking you uh, or giving you hints or something. Who knows? Mm-hmm. So those are the four characters we have. No, those are the four characters you have. I have one more character. Oh, yeah. Who's that? Lena. Oh, you have Lena. Oh, good call, Eric. Let me pull up Lena. I didn't prepare properly. Lena. Lena. I'm sorry about that, Eric. Didn't not ta- my game. I didn't take you into account. It's not canon for you. It's We're canon for me. Trying to be comprehensive. This is in alphabetical order. I should be able to find it easily. Here she is. Lena. Profile. Sweet country girl. <laughs> Age 16. Female. Origin. Arnie. Another. Height 5'5". Five, five. Can I guess body type? Are they all different? Uh, I think most of them are different. So far, weight is 93 pounds and the build is? Corn cob. Close. Ordinary. <laughs> Uh, she's right-handed. Her Japanese name is also Lena. Her weapon is, of course, and I don't think we covered this, her weapon is utensils. Mm. So, great. Good job. You Maybe pick up a sword or something? I don't know. Yeah. I'm glad she's right-handed, too. We should take note of people who are lefties who have the same mental disability that Chris has. Hey, you know, it's true. It makes using a mouse different for me, except for not. People who are left-handed who use, who use the left-handed mouse settings are weird. Your world's so fucked. I don't, I, I, don't do, I don't do that. I, use, I, I just learned the, 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 the right way. Okay. So that's all of our character profiles. Okay, let's consult the real net. Initializing real net. Cliff Racer says on star levels, also, while everyone gets the star level stats, the limited per stat increases from random battles are character specific. So characters you use all game long will be stronger than, than the ones you haven't used. SSC Ninja said that, quote, he is the most ubiquitous person in video games. Also, whenever, quote, it can't be him, it's always him. <laughs> yes. That's a good point. Yeah, because we we that quote he from what Karsh earlier. Yeah. yeah, he said that he would that Surge would be here. Yes. Did we talk about Karsh's flamboyance in terms of his outfit? He's pretty pretty. We didn't though. Yeah. Well, we're, um, we're, we'll see him again. So we'll talk about him again next time. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Assassina just says, "Can you abandon Pashul?" I mean, that's the kind of thing in Final Fantasy VII after the Cat Sith or Cat She betrayal. I killed him and never PHS him back. Oh. So you can like abandon people in your head cannon oh yeah of course you can i mean kill i didn't kill him i let his hp get to zero and then never summoned him thanks for all that for joining us tonight we appreciate the comments we'll be back soon next time we're heading through to termina majora's mask no the port town of termina thanks eric thank you chris this has been a production of retrograde amnesia recorded on August 12th, 2020. Thank you, Mark, Shepard. for the intro track. You're welcome, Chris. Find us on Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcast. More importantly, tell your friends, spam a chat, do whatever. Post on Twitter. Go on Face. No, don't do that. Email the show at RetrogradeAmnesiaPodcast at gmail.com. And if you like the show, support us on Patreon if you want. At patreon.com slash RetroAM. Get early access, bonus episodes, mini series, and more. Until next time. Yes, we will kill God. And now you may go back to sleep. I should also say voting rights as a uh, <laughs> as a Patreon uh, bonus. Mm-hmm. Not their their podcast is really good. I love that podcast. Uh, their Final Fantasy Ten series has been great. Uh, let's see. Oh, the worst Final Fantasy. Yeah, they don't like it either, but it's a good podcast. <laughs> I think this Friday is their blitz. Uh, this is their first Blitzball episode, so I'm looking forward to that. That's why we can never do Final Fantasy X, is I refuse to learn Blitzball. I liked Blitzball at the time, but of course, you know how <clears> I am. I played it the one time you had to, and that was it. Yeah. Oh man, underwater soccer? Sounds great. Oh, it's a math game. Yeah, cool. Fucking cares. Hey, all RPGs are math games. It must but... be a tactics game, it's the exact same shit. Okay. Uh, hey, Eric, come on. You want to record another uh, podcast? Yep. I'm just uh, getting everything set up and. Uh... We didn't watch Fargo when I got home last time. We watched A Serious Man. Have you seen that movie? A Serious Man, no. It's a Coen Brothers film from 2009. Mm. It's the most Jewish movie I've ever seen. Oh, cool. I... Cool. Tiffany has a great interest in Judaism, so she was yeah. tickled. Yeah, I knew that. Awesome. What was the movie about? Uh... God, it was based on a book, it had Elijah Wood in it. Sin City? No. <laughs> No, it, it was about his Jewish heritage, and he was trying to rediscover it or something. Oh, I'm not familiar. Lo- something about a light. Zohar? I don't know what it's called. Initializing fake head. Chris is thinking of everything is illuminated from 2005. They talked about the Zohar a lot in that movie, by the way. The Simple Man. I was like, hey, I know what that is. And they said Shabbat a few times. Oh, cool. Oh, I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, of the YouTube show Hot Ones lately. Mm-hmm. You know, are you familiar I'm familiar. With yeah. 
Uh, we watched the Shaq episode last night. It was terrific. Oh, boy. I like Shaq. Yeah, Shaq's great. That's a good show. They got. The, I didn't, didn't expect to like it as much as I do, but the guy's a really good interviewer. He's very affable. Yeah. You know, and we should do these for everybody. Yeah, we definitely have to get, get back on these. We'll catch up on that uh, as soon as we can. We only have a few characters. So If we catch up on that, do we need salt and pepper? <sighs> I'm trying to think of a good mustard pun, but I couldn't do it. Um, you, you couldn't muster a good pun? <laughs> I couldn't muster a good pun there. You must mustard on. Okay. So thanks for that, Carfo. There is apparently a, a character status screen that has a bunch of cool facts about the characters, so we will begin to analyze those. <laughs> analyze, is that the right word? Read those as we go forward. You want to sleep here? Mianese? You're in a pickle, aren't you? Fuck you. I'm just going to put him in here this time. <laughs> make, make him all sound fu- stand all fucked up. I accidentally uh, pressed reverse on one of the, uh, the clip. I had like a clip isolated because I was fixing it. And I accidentally clicked the reverse thing, and it was uh, it, w- it went to uh, Twin Peaks speech. No, 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 Yeah, there's something in Audacity where I fuck up, and it starts playing it backwards yeah. in once an episode. That, we should do that, like, in episode 20. Just play the intro music reverse. Just, yeah. <laughs> Why not?